So let's continue on with our transformations. Now we're going to talk about our horizontal and vertical translations. So let's look at this example here. We have y equals x plus 3 squared. So how is that translated? So that is translated left 3, right? So it's opposite. So a positive 3 means it's left 3. So we're going to graph our quadratic. We're going to move our vertex left 3. Use the pattern right one, up one, right one, up three. And then same thing on the other side. So here is left three of our quadratic. The other one, if we have minus three, that means we're going to the right three. So move the vertex right three and then use the pattern right one, up one, right one, up three, left one, up one, left one, up three. And here is the graph. Now let's shift up and down. So a plus three at the end is going up three so up three but what fits there so right one up one left one up one and that's about it that's all that'll fit there then here if you have negative three that's going to go down three it's on the outside as opposed to this one on top which was inside okay so just recognizing those differences so down three is here right one up one right one up three and we still don't have a new room for right one up five but that is the next pattern and it would actually go um, right one up seven as well if there was room. So these are our horizontal on top and these are the vertical on the bottom. Now, just to kind of go over it now, we're not doing a lot of horizontal stretches and shrinks. So this is kind of bonus. Um, if you know it, that's awesome, but really it's, you know, not necessary. We're going to focus on the other ones, but I do want you to see horizontal stretch and shrink. And what does that look like? So we have y equals one half x squared here. And so what that means is this is actually a horizontal stretch and it's the reciprocal horizontal stretch by two. And so one way to kind of be able to graph this is you're actually going to distribute this. So this is going to be one half squared times x squared. One half squared is one over four x squared. And so I kind of talked about it here, where if you have a fraction, what's a good number to plug in? Well, we could plug in two. Two is a nice number, uh, but four is actually excellent because one fourth times four squared that is 4 squared is 16 over 4, which is 4. So remember, we plugged in a 4, and our y value is 4, so it's 4, 4. So again, it's whatever that denominator is when the this is a 1, it's just a, a. So 1 over a x squared, you can graph it like this. The next good point is that denominator, and then right that way and up that way. So it starts here, right 4, up 4, left 4, up 4, and then that kind of helps us out here. Um, if we did plug in one, uh, you would find that you would get, I'm sorry, if you plugged in two, you would get one here. So just if you tried that out algebraically, that's what you would get. Now, if we have three X squared, now this is a horizontal shrink by the recipro reciprocal of one third. So then we would, again, multiply this out so we can graph it. So three squared is, so three squared times X squared is nine X squared. So I'm going to scale my graph. This is 10, this is eight, six, four, and two. So nine X squared is a vertical stretch. And so what we could do is this is actually my next point, right one up nine, left one up nine, right? If we're using the one, three, five pattern, A is nine. First one was right one up nine, right one up, 27, right one up, 45, right? It goes up very, very, very fast, okay? So again, this is something that I don't want you to focus on, but I just want you to see. Um, I'm never going to give you horizontal stretches and shrinks. Um, we're focusing mainly on vertical stretches and shrinks, um, writing equations as well as graphing. So let's do a couple of practice problems looking at those transformations, so getting more practice. Describe the transformation of f of x equals x squared, represented by g of x equals x plus 4 raised to the square, then graph each function. So it is asking you to graph the parent and graph the transformation. So what is the transformation happening here? If we have a positive 4 on the inside, how is this translated? So this is translated left 4. 
So let's graph our parent first, x squared. So it starts at the origin, then right one, up one, right one, up three. And here is the graph. Next, you go left four. So this is the g of x. So let me graph, uh, label this. This is f of x. And then g of x, it's left four. So it's here, and we use the pattern right one, up one, right one, up three. And then here is our translated function. So example two, so describe the transformation, one third x squared. So this is going to be, so remember there's no horizontal, this is just a vertical shrink by one third. Okay, and then the parent function is x squared. So let's graph that first of all. Now vertical shrink by a third. So let's just do, if you know the pattern, it's great. I'm gonna tell you right now that it's gonna be three, three, that that is the next point from the vertex. So if we have one third X squared, what good number can we plug in? Well, three is really good. When X is three, so three squared, what is three squared? Three squared is nine over three, and therefore it's three. So therefore, we could go, if x is 3, y is 3, it's stretched out here. And notice how hor uh, sorry, vertical shrink is more flat, like a bowl. Okay, so 3, 3 there. So, and of course, I should label these. So this is my f of x here. My pink is, oh, I'm sorry, that's my g of x. This is my g of x, and the pink is my f of x in this case. And then my g of x is here. Now, if you want another pattern, um, you, you're like, okay, well, what about that 135? I could still use that 135 here. So what? how do you use that is if you have a denominator, that's going to change. The, so normally we go right one, up one, right one, up three, right? Now, if we have a denominator, whatever that denominator is, you're actually going to move that. So our denominator in this case is 3, and then we're going to multiply 3 to here as well. So this is going to be 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 5 is 15. So what this means, if you have a vertical shrink, you could do this pattern as well. If you want to follow the 1, 3, 5. We have to plug in multiples of 3 because of the denominator of 3, so that way it'll cancel out. So that's why I'm using this denominator of 3. What happens is, is you go right three, up three, right three, up nine, right three, up 15. So it really is very similar to all of our other quadratics when it's stretched. The only difference is, is you have to move right whatever the denominator is. So say for instance, we're looking at, let's just say one fifth x squared again. So we're gonna use that pattern. It's still the same. 5, 15, 25, you would go right 5, up 5, right 5, up 15, right 5, up 25. What about 1 over 11 x squared? What would happen? So that would be right 11, so 11 times 1, 3, 5, up, uh, right 11, up 11, right 11, up 33, right 11, up 55. Okay, so just to kind of help you with a little bit more of some help with graphing with fractions. Now that only works with the fractions um, with the numerator is one.